Everybody say you mean Let's ball when the bean Who's that out there living they dream Let's ball when the bean Who's that still smoking all the green Let's ball when the bean Come on y'all, let me hear you scream Let's ball when the bean Welcome to the post show Here we are Bringing it at you Early on the week, I know Mondays I usually need podcasts to listen to and uh, we're trying to break it up a little bit, see what ends up working out and getting some of that good information earlier and later on in the week. Hopefully it's our new schedule. Hopefully we can give you one every Monday and Thursday. Right, right, right. So we're coming off of a UFC on Fox 27. It was on Big Fox. We ended up watching those through our basic cable here in the United States and uh, I thought it was a really fun night of fights. Ended up doing pretty well. There's a lot of new talent. There was a lot of interesting fights in there. A lot of people were talking shit, and I think it came through. What did you? What was your rough estimate over the night? How'd you feel once it was all said and done? On a scale of one to ten, <sighs> what ten being what UFC two hundred five or something like that two hundred nine. I don't know what are the big cards anymore. I don't know them by number. I just know the nights that... Was it 215 that it was the like night... three championships? That's pretty much as good as it gets all yeah. GSP. Or the like night that. Connor. I think it was Connor Diaz 2 maybe with Misha Holly. Connor Diaz 1 with Misha Holly. Uh-huh. That was that a was good. A yeah. Good there's night. a few. There was a... There's so many... Oh yeah, There's and so, there's so even many. before I ever started watching fights, like ones you could probably you could probably tell me ten. Yeah. Um so on a scale those fights being those significant and one being um just uh maybe how I feel about uh Rockhold Rockhold Yol. <laughs> I think it's Perth, UFC Perth. Um that being well, whatever. It's like a six. It was an okay night fight night. I feel for like a fox card. If you didn't know anything about fighting, it was a decent card to come into. The sad part for me, boring ass lady fights. Yeah, uh, I can't knock that. I, yeah, I think that you're onto something there and still growing. It's still a growing division. There's still talents in the women's divisions that out of nowhere we can have a maybe not cyborg guest type of fighter, but... The, the, Somebody with skills coming up. The thing out. UFC, I hate to be Brennan Schaub here because he talks about numbers and stuff. Fox is going to be, when you're on main show Fox, main TV, big Fox as you call it, when you're on that channel, that's how you get your new audience. That's your growing time. That's mm-hmm. where you're just looking for new people that are flipping across. There's no football. They don't know what to do. They're sitting on their couch. It 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 was a weird lineup of stars on this card Compared to how the Fertitta brothers used to play it. I agree. Totally agree. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there wasn't those up-and-coming stars. Definitely the Zufa was the era of UFC basing itself off of WWE. But WME has never once said that they were basing their motto or their projections in the future off of WWE. So I think that we're going to see things that we've never seen before it's a it's a complete changing of hands i just i guess what i'm trying to say is i'm not surprised because i'm expecting anything to happen i i'm not dead set that it's going to go one way due to this being such a big year for the ufc before we run through it and i don't know if we i should wait till afterward to ask you this question Uh do you think there was a loser of the night and a winner of the night over the whole entire card yeah there was nothing. I think Gillespie, Gregor Gillespie, is probably the winner of the night. I can see that and agree with you there, I think. And then the, and maybe Bektik. Both those guys right there. Yeah, they both had big showings. The loser of the night. I mean, I'd be it'd probably be our net the debut fighter just because he got swarmed for two rounds, but the person that also lost the most was what was that nasty split decision? Was it the Kish Kim? Uh, I think Coke. I think Coke lost a lot there. I don't know. Bobby Green coming off of a four fight losing streak just beating you? Like, that's not going to feel good. I think the loser of the night's Derek Brunson. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, we definitely did go with Derek. He definitely did not come through. I don't think I ended up with Derek. I think I ended up with friggin' Souza for decision. Think of how crazy. Something's going on. I think either there's a glitch or we're pressing stuff while we're talking. 
because I don't ever remember picking Sousa by decision. That's a really odd choice for me. A five-round decision. Right. Sousa versus Brunson. What I feel like I might be doing with topology as well is opening windows earlier in the week and then pressing my shortcut and it opens a new window. So then at the end of the week when I close all of my apps or at the end of the day, it might be the final card and so it won't switch it. But I think it might. there may be some <coughs> operator error in here for me because I know... I ended up picking Coke, and I had green decision on my card. And same with uh, Feely. We had Andre Feely as our underdog pick of the week, and I somehow had Dennis Bermuda's decision, which doesn't make any sense to me. Let's so, work up through it. All from the starting from the bottom to the top, we have Corey Sandhagen <laughs> defeating Austin Arnett in a two ra- second round TKO. This was Sandhags coming out. We said that team elevation was going to take Sam Hagen to new levels, and he is. He really, to me, looked TJ-esque in a lot of his setups, a lot of his stuff, and the, the announcers themselves were saying, hey, he was training with TJ for a while, but due to some conflict issues, uh, they're no longer doing that, and I'm assuming it's because Sam Hague all of a sudden is in a division that's going to have to fight TJ, so you got to cut that right away. Um, by the time he crawls up the ranks, TJ will be done. TJ, if he plays it smart, he'll be done. By the time San Hagen gets up to where he's going to be competition for TJ, even right. whether it's in weight or out of this sport altogether. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we were right on, I think, hashtag Colorado cardio all night. Oh, yeah. All, all night. I could see, though, even though Austin was getting beat to the punch pretty much everywhere, the angles that San Hagen was throwing were really good, but... A thing that I was hesitant on with Haig is that he really starts to slow down. And a better fighter is going to be able to capitalize on that. And Sand Haig has been able to finish a lot of his opponents. So UFC, it seems to all those finishes, don't come as much, as often because you got guys that can take a beating and then throw one back. So Sand Haig now knows what it takes to be in the UFC, but his he hasn't had the UFC level competition yet but he's breaking in that door because he's gonna get nothing but good fights coming up i just colorado will be the next mecca of ufc i'm saying it i think that cardio it's the highest spot in this country and that cardio as we're seeing it's the better the cardio, the bigger fights you get, the more it matters. More guys are withstanding those first rounds with the leg kicks, leg kicks, leg kicks, and turning it on later on. Right. I think it's, I mean, not that cardio wasn't always important in the sport. I just think guys like TJ Dillashaw are taking it all to a n- next level. And I know he gets credit from UFC p- fans, real fans, but casuals don't get how much TJ Dillashaw is changing the game all around. Is it TJ or is it that banging Ludwig system? Um, I think a little bit of both. I think all good. I don't think you do it alone, no matter what it is. Interesting. I think the team is important in this sport. And one guy goes in and implements what the team perfects. But I think the team is so important. I don't think you can do it alone. So... On to the next fight. We had Nico Price defeating George Sullivan via submission round two. I actually was shitting my pants a little bit during this fight. We had Nico Price everywhere, but he was getting outworked top control by Sullivan at multiple times. But we both saw Sullivan gassing just that much more. Uh, but the fact that Sullivan was able to ha- get takedowns on Price really is making me think against a good wrestler... Price throws up submissions and stuff, but an even stockier wrestler that has a better gas tank is going to be able to keep fighting those off long enough for a three-round decision. So, I still really like Price, but uh, Sullivan, time to get on out of here, my friend. I wasn't as worried as you, and I actually feel like I said to you during this fight, I can't believe I didn't pick submission on this before it way ever happened. Right. I'm like, I can't believe I didn't see that happening. Like, Nico Price is so long. He has a good rubber guard. Like, we were discussing it during the fight before it happened. Right. The same way we were discussing a lot of things in the fight before even the announcers said them, which led us to, we got to get the camera up and have our own... Live um, show. Yeah, and have our own fight compadre. Hola, compa. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. Having a live show, end up getting 
subscribers. I'm sure we'll be able to figure it, figure it out when it comes. But it really was interesting how imitate how life imitates art. And we must be the art out there. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, and just so you guys know, you can follow us everywhere at Lesbo and the Bean, including Patreon at Lesbo and the Bean. And if you guys ever donate anything to that, it will always go for the production of this show. Whether it's, you know, for the camera or for parts of our studio. Dare I or... say they get a shout out? Oh my gosh, more than that. They get a shout out? It, eventually, we'll have a back wall of fame, and the people will have slots on that Whoa. wall of fame. I think, you know, top 10 slots. Be a little cam girl esque. Yeah. Top, to think. Top, <laughs> top 10 slots can be on our wall of fame. That would be, the, yeah. What the future may hold. And maybe we'll have top 10 slots of the week, or maybe we'll have top, top 10, you know. And, and we'll give them shout outs, obviously, on shout the podcast out. as well. Um, and I wouldn't mind we're going to set up to a phone call, uh, like a line, and maybe we can get a 1-800 number depending on how that goes so people can call from all over. And we'll start playing some of those on air so we can play your questions on air instead of reading them. I think that would be a cooler thing. Uh, Bring it back a little old school radio style where people are calling in. Sounds Even though fun. I don't want to take them live on air because I don't want your baba buoys. Hey, that's what I was thinking. That's how we're going to get on air. Howard Stern. That's exactly yeah. how we're going to So anyway, get everywhere, Stern. Lesbo and the Bean. That's it. So, we had Vince Michelle defeating Joaquin Silva in a three-round decision. Takedown's riff definitely took over in this fight. It was a grind. Both fighters looping, throwing heavy, heavy hands. Both guys stay in the division at 155. Nothing really stuck out. They're both semi-grinders, but Silva, not as much due to that wrestling. For Pachel, as we said here at the cast so nothing to say negative about these guys they can both win fights in the UFC something I realized about myself in this fight and then it just was solidified throughout the night and then I was thinking back to previous picks I made especially even the last fight card um I'm a wrestler hater <laughs> <laughs> interesting after the conversations we've had about I know. American wrestling I know and it seems I don't trust it like Maybe I've just learned a lot in it. Like You're waiting for it to get exposed, and it's not going to get not, exposed. It's not. It really is almost like a perfected thing. And there's things that some guys do. The dangerous part is if you take a guy like Souza, which I know we'll get on to later, um, when they have like such a good ground or such a good ground base like jiu-jitsu or American wrestling, and then they perfect their stand-up. And mm -hmm. that's where Souza is a pretty frightening guy. Oh, yeah. So, eventually getting there. Anything left for Pichelle, Silva? Do you see them any forward? I think they, I think they both looked okay. They'll beat guys at 55. They're not going to make a run for the title anytime soon. No, neither guy um, stood out to me enough to even think of them in rankings. Am I just waiting to start a fade Pichelle, uh, like, soon? Like I feel I like did I, prematurely. I, I'm close. He's getting in that age range, and this performance, even though it looked good, uh, it he took even more damage than he usually does. So, the the fights only get harder, Brichel. <laughs> the fights only get harder. On to the next fight, we had Kim defeating Justine Keish in a three round decision. I thought that this was not only did I have Keish, but this was a robbery. I had Keish winning three rounds out of that. And I don't even know how the scorecards went, but I know that a lot of people had this going the other way. I thought it was a surprising fight. The judging all night was interesting. I don't know how they were judging it. I think that we were talking about it during. I think the third round was weighed heavier than the rest of the fight. That tends to happen. It would, especially with just boxing But it shouldn't judges. if you were just going with the scorecards. I, I but would agree. it was interesting how um, certain things we... Uh, takedowns we didn't know if they were going to count or not it looks like they did it looks like they held on some of them but it should have been more of a blowout i was actually surprised fights. to me even though i thought quiche won a split decision here i still will fade quiche from this point forward and kim's one i want to watch I feel like if she got in with a good camp and she needs to tone tone up, she even her body style to me looks like she could drop to the one fifteen. Wow! But I thought she had some crisp strikes for. I thought her yeah. arms looked so feeble and weak. I was surprised. Her head was bouncing around. Was this the fight that 
she got punched in the eye and said stop and the, yes this you're was so it right? right on that where she actually got she punched, got punched and she, said, not she poked, poked me she, and there was no poke they didn't even show the review and dominic cruz himself said that was a punch and i was saying that was a punch i had just watched that right hand come in from kish hit her right in the eye and she just that's a tko like kish should have had a tko like and round she three. stopped it was crazy. before the ref stopped yeah and them. then the ref stopped that came in and stopped and technically that should have been so you need to get in that ref and shit. God dang. I would not let that happen. That would have been a TKO. Either way, how do you feel both of these fighters? Don't care. Go? Yeah. I, they're, in this division, they can lose four fights in a row and they're going to keep a contract. So, onward, we have Marcos defeating Lima in a three-round decision. This was also up in sketchy the air. Sketchy decision. Sketchy, sketchy-ass decision. These, I feel like the takedowns weren't counted as much. There was minimal ones, but I thought Marcos would have had... um more it would have been more dominant i think it was like 29 28 either way with these guacamole fights as we correctly predicted i ended up making an entire dinner making it back right before because nothing stuck out for either one of these ladies in marcos and lima for me neither one did any did much i don't know whether to fade them or not I, it all depends on their next opponent but what do you think about the marcos lima guacamole centerpiece it's the same thing with this div this division. Neither of them is going to crawl to the top echelon of girls. Mm -hmm. And I think <laughs> I think this is how you can do the 115 or 125 at this point. If I'm WME, can Ro or can a uh, Paige Van Zant fight them? I think they're both safe fighters for Paige Van Zant to fight. So that means they don't go anywhere. In my opinion, that. I could see that. <clears throat> Totally, 100%. And that's a really unfortunate. And Marcos, I had so much more hype on. And personally, she's just kind of not lived up for me. Do they ever get to go to the Andrage? They don't even get to the Carla Esparza level, as far as I'm concerned. Like, these girls are I not think in both that lose. Yeah, I think they would both lose to Esparza. <coughs> so, onward, we have Chukagian defeating Barella in a three-round decision. I just got to say... The train herself really came through with the key eyeing and just tons of output. I feel like it was like two to one compared to strikes. She had double the amount of strikes on Barella. Barella is not even UFC caliber to me, but for this division, she can, again, lose three, four fights and keep in, the, in there. Chukagian's getting better and better. I'm really liking what she's doing. Take down the fence needs to keep improving that ground stuff. She did get up off of her back. Um, but do you like this, this one? Sketchy. Caitlin, the choo-choo train Chikagian. Exactly. I love it. Love it. <laughs> but it doesn't need to be Blonde Fighter. I'll tell you that right now. Not Blonde Fighter. Everybody fighter. talks shit. Not only did we... Told you ahead of time. All of, our, <laughs> all of our well, significant others talk shit on that name. And the announcers brought it up like Blonde Fighter has no... What, weren't they saying something? Yeah. Weren't everybody. they like... Well, everybody. Train. It's got to be trained. Choo, Caitlin, choo, train. the train, Choo Kagan. Ch Caitlin, the Choo Choo Train, Choo Kagan. Caitlin, Choo Choo Train, Choo Kagan. Those are one of the choices. Maybe we'll put up a vote. But guess what won't be on there? Even if I wrote down 100 names for her, 100 nicknames, it wouldn't be Blonde Fighter. It would not be Blonde <laughs> Fighter. That fight was kind of unmemorable. I guess she, she had an okay stand-up. Um... She's lucky she was fighting somebody at Barella's um, level, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there's nothing about her that puts her in any kind of threatening place for even the top of this division. It sucks for this division. Yeah. What do you do in this division Ooh. when you have Shevchenko? You, what you don't do is put three of these fights back to back to back. Well, yeah, UFC. Are you kidding? <laughs> like, you mix these in throughout the night. You don't fucking stack them on I top of each other. I even said, this is so sexist and horrible. I said to you after this fight, was this the last lady fight? And you said yes. And I was like, oh, thank God. It was tedious as fuck. You need to break it up a bit. Or if you're going to put three lady fights back to back to back, put in three different styles where you have a lady who fucking punches, a lady who fucking they grapples. They all kind of turn out like that, though, regardless of the styles right now. Really think about it. They all pretty much have that well-rounded MMA-esque. One might have a little more power than the other, but not well, really. Well, I even, like, if you took the home cyborg fight. 
Yeah. I that was enjoyable to me. If you took, um, but that's the top top level. No, no, no. I understand that, but I think there's a lot of thick girls in that top top level. Yeah. It's just it doesn't really matter any way you cut it. There shouldn't if it was going to be three back to back to back, even if they were a main event, it would have to be girls at that top level. Yeah, to make it interesting. Yeah, otherwise it cannot. But you got to get these other ladies fights too. Like, yeah, you, fine. Oh, Guess wow. what it can be? Once every three fights. So you have okay. one lady fight, two dude fights, a lady fight, two dude fights. I would lady love that. Lady fight, and I'm not saying because it's sexist. It's just. We talk about it all the time. Lady fighting is growing leaps and bounds quicker than guy fighting ever did. But it still has some growing to do. Yep. That's It would be crazy not to say that. It would be crazy to ignore that and think that women's fighting is on the exact same par as men's fighting. It would be crazy. It's getting there. It's getting there. It is. For every one year of women's fighting is 10 years of, and I mean on TV. For every one year we see women on TV, they're growing 10 years of what it took men to do on TV. It's oh, crazy. yeah, the leaps and bounds. We leaps hear. and bounds. Leaps and bounds. So, taking another leap and a bound. Yeah, like, I don't even want to talk about this. <laughs> You'll we be had... hashtag me too up in this bit. <laughs> <laughs> Mersad Bektik defeating Godfredo Pepe in the worst wage gauge we ever had. Was it he the wage gauge? Was it Pepe? I think it was Pepe. I think it was. And sorry, guys. a body shot, two minutes, it 40 seconds in. It hurt us, too. Oh, it hurt my, a lot of my cards. A lot of my cards. And he was looking good at first. <sighs> so, Bechtek's on a roll, but Pepe's on his way on out of here. I wouldn't say It was say a get. body shot. Yeah, it was a beautiful body right shot by Bechtek. to the Bechtek. sternum. Oh, yeah. It hurt. It would put me down. I couldn't take that. <laughs> um, so, what are you going to do? Bechtek keeps going. Pepe... You're going to have another fight in the UFC. On to the next one. Pepe's lucky he has the right look to get another fight in the UFC, um, which is just as important as the words that you use to get the fight. Uh, Mursad Bektik looked good, but I still think don't jump on that hype train, everyone. It's dangerous when you watch these guys get too quick of a finish. And I thought Bechtick got hurt a few times in that fight early by Pepe. Yep. And if Pepe's a guy that you say you're going to fade, Bechtick looked good in that fight. Is Pepe UFC caliber? I think, yeah, he's not making a title run. But he'll he'll have a job in the UFC. The next, the next fight that Bechtick gets, he did well enough in this fight. The next fight that he gets will be against somebody... I want to see how his ground game all works out. Oh, yeah, I think that's a good call. I need a wrestler against him. Now everything's going to be wrestler. But I even <laughs> said it. I always pick a wrestler card. Well, if that seems to work, I need to just pick more wrestlers on my cards. True, 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 true. Anything left with either of these? No. Anything like... to remember? Nope. All right, so we had Bobby Green at 155 defeating Eric Koch in a three-round <laughs> decision. I was all over Koch. During the show, somehow, my topology saved improperly, and I had green decision, and it worked out. This was a sketchy-ass split decision. Um, green was getting hit just as much. Coke was just, I think, showing it more. You know, it's a damn shame that this fight happened to both guys, because I actually thought both guys looked better than they had in la any of their last fights. Totally agree. And it could have been, if they were fighting different guys on the nights, both guys could have been shooting stars in the night. They both had a lot of good moments in the fight that if they were going against lesser fighters, it would have shown more. They just seemed to stunt each other. They just seemed to, like, brr, make each other kind of look... Bad, but they put on some good moments in there that I've never seen from Bobby Green in before. I've never seen him stand and blow with somebody again and again and again. I was impressed. I was impressed in the fight. It was pretty. It was an exciting decision, which you don't see all the time. Totally agree. Though, do you think that? Did you see? Am I just making it up, or is Bobby Green change his style a little bit? I feel like he's super flat-footed now. Doesn't have that much movement, but he is elusive. And he can wear a punch really, really well. Ugh. It's going to be hard for me to bet on either one of these fighters moving on. I, just, I agree. It's not going to be easy. They're not going to be favorites for any really fights I'm looking forward. At welterweight, though, we had a competition between Duro Dober and Frank Camacho. Duro Dober coming out in a decision. This was a split-ish type of a fight. This one, we were worried about the takedowns, worrying for Camacho or not. By the end, I do feel like we called it 100% right with Camacho's gas tank not being there. That's what happened. 
It was Camacho just having his hands at his hips. He was eating shots and giving shots every... I feel like this fight I was saying that Drew Dober was landing three, four, five shots, but Camacho was landing one hard one. So it was really sketchy to tell what the judges were going to pick. I do think the grappling exchanges benefited Dober. He even reversed it a few times. And I like Dober at this division. I hope he doesn't move down because I don't because I don't know how he made 170. I know we were talking about the whole fight. The fact that he said before that he would like to move back to 155, we think is nuts. So where re- did he have the fight, the fat to lose? The reason that Dober moved to 170 is because the UFC asked him to because his previous fight at 155, the very next day, he weighed in 28 pounds heavier than 155 pounds. Almost 30 pounds he gained. That can't be good for you. Like, your body's not moving the same way. It's not fair for the other person. They're they're a different size person. I thought Dober had a good showing at 70 as well. I thought he looked good. I thought it with... And he's a young enough guy that his skills could still come together. How do you feel about him on the mic? He was a great kid. He was saying, oh, the booze, the whatever. Like, we tried to finish each other. He had a really heartfelt, sentimental kind of thing, like... Thank you guys for letting me do this. We tried to come in here and put on a good fight. Yeah, like, know? what do you want? We tried to finish each other. Sorry, I didn't quit. Like, what the hell do you guys want? And Frank want? Camacho is an underrated guy, and I liked um, Drew Dauber. I thought he got out of the um, a lot of dangerous positions kind of easily. It, it made me impressed with him. I'm excited for him going forward. And I like him better at 170. Yeah, I think Camacho can also win a few fights at 70 as well. I don't think he's out of it by any means whatsoever. So, on the main event, we also had Gregor Gillespie versus Jordan Rinaldi. Gillespie being the biggest favorite of the night, also DK-wise. But he really paid out a finish at the end of the first round. I ended up picking the second round, but either way, it was a TKO. Gillespie just overwhelms you with crisp striking. He was the most expensive, but most amount of points of the night. To- yeah, and it paid off. I think it was like 133 or something like yeah. that. So there was enough underdogs in there to help me out throughout the night, and it was worth every penny. He helped me cash out by the end of the night. There was quite a few finishes. Was it Gillespie that was going to the body incredibly well? What fight was that? Oh, that was at Sam Hague. Sam Hagen. Sam Hagen was going to the body wonderfully. There was a few other guys going to the body really well. I am on the Gregor Gillespie bandwagon. I thought Rinaldi looked okay in the fight. And yeah. And Gregor Gillespie manhandled him. He is going to be one to watch. He's a hype train that I am all about getting on. And I feel so naive that I voted, picked against him. I thought he looked amazing. I like him going forward pretty much against anyone. He kind of, he's like an Usman of his division. At lightweight? At lightweight and <laughs> welterweight are the two thickest divisions in the UFC. And he's moving forward untouched. That's pretty high praise. He was hurt a few times, but he was tough. Coherent. He looks good and all. I thought his striking looked good. Yeah, it was crisp. And then he went to the ground. Yep. And Wow. Holy shit. Yep. Tons of heavy pressure. Everything he wanted to do. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, this is so easy. No, that other guy's UFC. Rinaldi has fights to win in the UFC. He's not just going to be walk over. He's going to win some fights, definitely. But Gillespie is in that road to the top. You can see that belt in his near future. Uh, Cody of Garbrandt a dangerous asked. division. Yeah. Of a dangerous Blue division. fucking killers. Killers. Killers at one point. He's at the right place, though, for those guys to be gone when he gets there. He's at the uh, right spot in his career. It's got to happen. work his way That's up the way it through the Eddie Alvarez's and the Dustin Poirier's. And the, there's some other guys, the Barboza's, to work his way up until he gets to the Tony and Khabib's. And somebody's going to lose that fight. Yep. Somebody. And I don't, a new prediction, Ooh. just since we're on this division, I don't think McGregor ever fights either of those guys. I think he just Nate Diaz is three and he dips. Out of UFC wow. and then boxes, maybe wow. another fight or two. Is there a prop line on that? How do we get money on that? Those neither of those fights come to fruition. There's got to be some sort of a uh, that's something my. Or other. I mean, really think about it. Why would you do either of those fights at McGregor, especially if they stripped your belt? It, Max Once surprised me gone. before. Max surprised me before. He doesn't need to surprise anyone anymore. 
He can just play it safe. Yeah, he'll, he'll make a million dollars regardless. And as far as the common fans concerned, especially like all the extra people that order the Mac vs. May pay-per-view, they only know about the Nate Diaz fights because that's all Floyd ever talked about. So that's the only fight that really matters as far as the common fans concerned. Mm -hmm. And the trilogy is set up to be there perfectly. It's a fight that McGregor thinks he can win. It's kind of the perfect setup if it's his last MMA fight. I'm going to go fight a real fight. And that's his claim to fame with boxing and getting these other fights and calling out the next boxer in the ring is being, oh, it's a real fight, in quotes. You know, it's not a boxing match under your set of rules. Right, 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 right. He goes in there, he calls out Manny Pacquiao or Polly, but I don't think Ugh. so. I think he calls Floyd out again. I think he calls Floyd out. And I think Floyd and him, I think Floyd and him already chatted on the phone. And Floyd's going to be waiting for this call. And it's going to take a year to prep up This to isn't it. a prediction. This is a nightmare. <laughs> that I is know. horrible. I don't think I we're don't ever, hear any more. We're never going to see Connor fight a fight that I don't that even want to hear it. I'm going to stick my fingers in my ears and just start... Blah, 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 blah. I know. It's just... Uh, we're never going to see him fight anymore like we want to see him fight. I know. That's never going to happen. We're never going to get that's to a, see... That's the prediction to make. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. So sorry, sorry, <laughs> one fifty-five, Gregor Gillespie. We are going on to the co-main event. We the had... Bean likes to talk about Conor McGregor once an episode. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get be able to write it in there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so at one forty-five, we had the co-main event: Andre Feely defeating Dennis Bermudez at one forty-five. This was the Leslie Smith underdog pick. You making money, putting money on the side, cashing it out. Decision off day. This people, this was a split decision that should have never been. By far, 30-27 for Bermudez is no way. If anything, he won two and three. But I, Andre Feely won the first round, guaranteed. I, I think easy or Andre Feely And won. two, because he got to two me, takedowns in each. Won one and round. two. Yep, easy. Three, a little sketchy, but I believe he got a takedown at the end of it. I think he did. I might and be wrong, but he had just as much. Three could have been up in the air. But he had four takedowns, guaranteed. Three could have been up in the air. But we actually said during this fight, I think, we thought Andre Feely had one and two. If anything, worst case scenario, it could have been a 10-8 for Bermudez in the third round. Because right. he controlled so many of the first minutes of the fight. But because he turned it on, his cardio didn't wash away. Like, it was sucking in two. Yep. And then three, he turned it on. Um, but we thought, if anything, draw. We thought it could have been a weird draw. It could have been if it was a 10-8 a round for Bermudez and the final one. But never Dennis Bermudez winning. 30-27, never. Never, never, never. Dennis, they were both landing equally. I didn't. I thought see... by round three yeah. in the last two minutes, Feely turned it back on. So then it would get it would he would have lost that ten eight that we originally thought Dennis Bermudez was having in the last round because mm -hmm. Feely came back. So even if Bermudez won that last round, in my opinion, there is no possibility of him winning there, there was one judge that kept doing 30 27s all night really weird stuff but that's because some of these judges are boxing judges get out of here i know come on give a little respect i would rather to me all the judges should be ex-fighters but the the community so small that ex-fighters are usually training other people so you have bias you get it's just you can't do that. You do have to have third party, but but I don't think you they, three judges. Door. I can't apply and get there. I think you have five judges and you mm -hmm. drop the highest and lowest scores, and that's how you. I do think that championship bouts should have two referees. I agree. For I the think belt. one in ring and one at each, mm -hmm. at well, least three around the edge. Just I think like it wrestling, be like football. there'll be one that'll always be telling the other one. There'll be a main and then his backup, and the backup is always supposed to be where the other one can't watch. So he's on the other side like, oh, he did grab his dick. And yeah, what about this shorts. idea? I, do you think the octagon should be attached to a car battery so that if they touch it or go up against it, they get zapped? <laughs> 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 no, I don't think that the, the insurance would allow it. I'd hold you up against it. it. <laughs> that would be dope as hell. We'll get there in the future as the sport evolves. It needs to get bloodier somehow. <laughs> but we had money on Feely. Ended up being plus money by the end of it. He was near even the whole time. Feely, keep going forward. Those takedowns are solid. Great timing. He was eating a lot of leg kicks during that whole time. Bermudez... Told you guys, he's losing it a little bit. Though he comes on later in the fights, but people know how to beat him. Beat him in the first two rounds. So, 
I agree. He is slipping a tad. On to the main event, we had... Speaking of slipping a tad, I was really just thinking in my head about Derek Brunson's roll, uh, ice skates. We had Rolando Souza defeating Derek Brunson via TKO round one. I think that Brunson even partially blocked that kick. Did he not? It yeah. just still, it still concussed him enough. Souza came in like a freaking predator and didn't jump, swarm on him. Gave it time, and it was a right stoppage. People that are saying that was early, that's bullshit. Brunson didn't need to get hurt anymore. He was dazed and confused. Agree. There's a... Uh, Derek Brunson kept it together better than I thought. He didn't blitz as much. And when he did try to blitz later on into the fight, you saw Derek Brunson doing that three, four punch combination and Souza pistoning that left in there. And that set up that head kick because Brunson took some damage prior to that landing. It wasn't... Just a head kick. It was an accumulation of the fight. Souza still looked good. He looked thinner than I remember ever seeing him. Leaner than he'd ever looked, but he looked lean and mean and had shit tons of power still. As long as Ronaldo de Souza does not pop afterward, after I all this. totally agree with that. <laughs> uh, he can make a run again at this. Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whitaker. We don't know what's going on with him right now. Nasty knees. Well, it's he done. has that. Did he get a staph, staph infection? As well, where he can, might lose like a little bit. Started eating his organs. Yeah, some crazy. Like oh that. my gosh! And all the best to him because he was a guy that I felt like was going places. Right. So uh, it's Romero Rockhold right now for the belt. Are you fucking kidding so, me? So Souza against either one of those, it's a rematch versus Romero, and then it's uh, yeah, Rockhold's beat Souza as well. I and. Mark my words, everyone, and I'm not a huge Yul Romero fan, but I think Luke Rockhold is not the same fighter. <laughs> that Miss Bisping knockout, he didn't look good in his last win. Even though he won in the second round, he did not look good doing it. He looked tentative, nervous. He looked like he buckled once, like his knees buckled once. I don't. I like Ronaldo Souza going forward a lot. I don't think a lot of guys have the power Bobby Knuckles does to knock Ronaldo out. Even though these fighters have all fought each other, I'm ready to watch them fight again. Each one of them. Me Pair too. them off with either, any one of them. And let some other 85ers get in the mix in there. And guess what? It'll be fun fights against them. But it sucks, this whole interim situation in this division Derek as well. Brunson, where does he go? Oh, well, I'm going to have to start fading Brunson much, much more. But he blitz. there's so many lower level guys that he can blitz and blow right through. And here's what I say about oh, him. And I almost wish we could put in short bets as the fight goes on that the odds just change depending on who has control. Like, I wish there was that kind of quick bets we could do online. Um, the second Brunson puts on those ice skates, he is done. Yeah, we do see it the every time. The second you start see him slipping around that ring, like he is on, like he's a little kid with his white socks on on a new wax kitchen it's floor. It's like Charlie Chaplin to me where he sticks his arm out as in his like, whoa, like, whoa, 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 his arms in the air, whoa, whoa, spinning. It's like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time we do tend to see that, it's bad news. And I was afraid I was going to see that, and it didn't happen for a long time. But eventually it happened in exactly what we thought. It happened, uh, yeah, it's, right around I the three-minute mark. I had Brunson on a few, but I put Suze on a bunch of DK cards as well. So he came through, ended up cashing out with a mix-up on a bunch I of follow. cards. Everyone I follow. Everyone I follow. Yep. And they all pick different fighters. Everybody picked different fighters throughout the night. Everybody ended up with the same score on Tabology. I only follow six people. But all those people, and everybody chose different throughout the whole night. Huh. I was like, what a weird night of fights. And that was, I have, believe I had 9 out of 12, only 3 wrong on the nine night. 9 out of 12, me as well. And I thought I had a That's bad night. I felt like I had a bad night. I feel like we had some unders in there. It wasn't all favorites. Uh-uh. The... I wish I would have, of all of it, that I really think about it, Gregor Gillespie, I should have changed uh-huh. the obvious and, and that's Brunson and Brunson. Fuck, you should have changed Brunson. I had Souza. Oh, okay. Well, I had, I had Brunson. I night. feel, but that's the one I feel stupid about. It's just, I don't know the ties. It is that wrestler. Brunson has that wrestling. Took down Yo Romero. He could have used it, but Souza on the ground is a fucking monster. So that was a heart pick just because Brunson is cashed for me so many other times. 
Um, and nothing else I really feel like Pitchell, like you were saying, I just don't know when to fade him, and I just faded him one fight too soon. Uh-huh. So I can't really say I would have gone back on that pick. San Hagen, Nico Price, um, the Kish Kim, like we said, we thought she got robbed, and I had Kish on that fight. A lot of people who had Kish, you know, thought she got robbed. Yeah. Um, but then I feel like in the next fight, it went my way because I had Marcos, but it was sketchy decision. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't even be pissed about that. Chukagan, uh, Bectic, I had Bobby Green, and. I, this is something I didn't change that I might have going into the fight. I started to like Coke as the fight went on, or as the um, week got closer. Oh, wow. And I just didn't change it, so I can't even be mad about the Gregor Gillespie thing. Andre Feely never swayed to Bermudez all week. And I actually thought I had Brunson on air and was surprised I had Sousa on my topology. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it all works out. It all comes out in the wash. Anything... Mm-hmm. Anything in the twits? Um, I guess post stuff. I don't know anything crazy that came out. Do you know who ended up getting fight of the night or like any of the bonuses? No, you were saying though that um they were putting some fights together really fast. That oh the Stipe DC fight. Isn't that like, like we were super like oh, that, fast. that's not gonna happen? Oh wait, yes yeah. it is. And it looks like it's probably gonna happen the same week of uh the cyborg, cyborg versus Amanda Nunes. Just because the fight house usually typically goes that. No, I think they moved the fight house to the New York week. So it goes out of Vegas that week and then New York has a card. It's interesting. I'm intrigued. I want to watch that one, honestly. Who do you have right now off the top of your head? DC. He's already won the heavyweight really? division. I got DC, baby. Against Stipe? DC, baby. <laughs> I'll give me that DC money. Give him, give him underdog. Against I got DC. Stipe? He's, he's won a heavyweight strike force contender he can't, that's how he got into mma they were like oh an alternate daniel cormier nobody had heard of him they just knew he was a wrestler won the belt and every beat josh Charbonnet, submitted him like dc baby dc baby <laughs> i have steve <laughs> right now <laughs> I, I fucking love dc i fucking you turned mark such a better i turned mark if i were the marketer for steve and you were the marketer for dc you would totally buy your product over mine <laughs> all <laughs> oh, i said was baby. i am steve <laughs> <laughs> yeah i gave you his accolades <laughs> i know you told me everything about him everything you gave you him do. a chant <laughs> <laughs> Any other good ones? Gaethje versus Poirier was announced. I don't know if we talked about that. That was Dude, recently. I don't like that fight that soon for also, Gaethje. Also, being a really recent fight where with Gaethje is like, chill out a little bit. Take some time off for that brain, Bubba. Take some time off for that brain, Bubba. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else crazy. I was going to um, get the fan questions together for you, but uh, there wasn't enough time in between last night's fights and this podcast. It's the, the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. What was the... There was a little bit of... We got next saturday's card coming up so we're gonna definitely get back to you on wednesday for a breakdown more than likely so i think the way even though we'll be recording the shows on sunday and wednesday they'll be ready for upload and everything for you guys on monday and thursday so we do it sunday wednesday you get it monday and thursday right now Hopefully everything on YouTube will work out when all that... It, there's more equipment in FUFA that you have to get together for this whole thing than we originally thought. It's a lot of FUFA. It's a whole bunch of rigmarole. Yeah, totally agree. So remember to follow us wherever... Let's go on the bean is sold. Right. At any point in time on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. The dot com. All of it. All of it. That's about the beat!